So today, Razer have sent over a couple parcels for us to unbox. It's gonna be a complete gaming setup overhaul with the latest and greatest from Razer themselves. I'm gonna begin with the smaller parcels and make my way to the gigantic one that you just saw. This is probably the biggest care package I think I've ever received from Razer in one go. All right, this is the first one. So I know there's at least one keyboard, there's a sound bar and a subwoofer, there's at least one mouse. So the first one we have is the Razer Deathstalker V2 Pro, a wireless low profile optical gaming keyboard. Wow, this is wireless and has optical switches with the Razer Red switches. Okay, okay, now I'm happy. I am a very big fan of the Razer Red switches, if you don't know already. They're very quiet, they feel very nice to type on. I've never tried the low profile Razer Red switches. Are they the exact same as the ones I have in my keyboard right now? We'll find out in a moment. I'll do a sound test for you. But before we do that, I think we need to take a look at what else is in this parcel here. So this has, I think, more than one product. Wait a minute. What? Okay. See, this is what I mean by, I don't know entirely what's in this thing. I didn't know that they're sending the Respawn chewing gum. I've been sent razor chewing gum. What? <laughs> Chew while you game, of course, of course. The respawn lineup. Damn, they give, dude. Okay, in terms of presentation, this looks sick. I'm a fan. Tropical punch flavor, pomegranate watermelon flavor, and finally, cool mint flavor. I'm gonna put the chewing gum on the side for now. I'll do a taste test at the end of the video and I'll let you know what I think of the Razer chewing gum. Next up, we have a Razer Stream controller. Sort of similar to an Elgato Stream Deck that I've been using for many years. Bit of a different approach to this Stream Deck. We have the Mouse Dock Pro from Razer as well. I do wonder if this is gonna work with my Razer Viper V2 Pro that I've been using since its release. We of course also have the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro, very similar to the Viper mouse I have in my setup right now, also in white. I do like that. I do sort of like to have like a contrast in my setup all right, so we've gotten through most of these smaller parcels. I think it's time for the big one. Now, I'm not sure if this is just the sound bar or if there's more stuff in here. Okay, I think this might just be the Razer Leviathan V2 sound bar. This parcel's empty. That is everything. So this here is probably the thing I'm most excited about, the Deathstalker V2 Pro. We have some stickers. I do like that the whole booklet is completely blacked out. Size-wise, how it compares to my current keyboard, which is the Razer Huntsman Mini that I've been using for a long time now. I even ended up skinning my Elgato Stream Deck white to match my Razer Huntsman Mini keyboard. And I even have a dedicated like volume wheel controller because the Huntsman Mini doesn't have that. But this Razer Deathstalker V2 Pro really has it all. Dedicated volume wheel, I'm guessing play pause, skip, next track, previous track, all that. And as for the keys and how they sound, Sort of similar sound wise, but a little bit different as well. Hmm, I'm not sure which one I prefer just yet. As for this side of the keyboard, it does have two modes built in. We have 2.4 gigahertz, which is of course via the USB dongle. Yeah, for those of you looking for the uh, USB dongle, it is inside the keyboard. I have a lot of dongles from Razer already. Okay, we're setting up your keyboard. Well, it is already working, very nice. So straight away, we're downloading the update for the uh, Deathstalker V2 Pro. At the moment, you might actually be thinking that my current setup is completely wireless as well, which it is in terms of the mouse, but it isn't for the volume wheel, for the stream deck or the actual keyboard. It is very neatly cable managed, but it's not actually wireless, but now it will be. Less cables, I'm a fan. And just like that, we've removed this guy. And when it comes to the Razer Huntsman Mini, it does use a detachable USB-C cable and we can just replace that whole keyboard with this new one. And I'm gonna add a better way of charging this keyboard without having cables everywhere all the time, even though it is a wireless keyboard. And that is via my own magnetic charger that I have stuck under my table. These will be released next year, Q1. So be ready. Genuinely just one cable that you could charge your keyboard with, your mouse with, your headset with, or via a magnet. It really is dead easy. Well, now that we've set the new keyboard up, I think it's also time 
We set up the stream controller from Razer, powered by Loop Deck. Here it is. Oh, okay. Oh, I do like this. It sure feels premium, that's for sure. Of course, some documentation, the Razer stream controller, the actual cable, USB-C of course, angled, nice. The Elgato Stream Deck is gonna be parting ways with the setup for maybe the foreseeable future, unless this product is like a complete letdown. Well, in terms of quality, this Razer Stream Controller actually gives me an incredible first impression. Every button feels good, feels high quality. The dials actually feel brilliant, very similar to this dial. In fact, now these are even better, I'd say. You can click them, they have a satisfying click. Very good buttons. Now it is time to remove the Elgato Stream Deck, which again, I'll show you how easy that is. And just like that, the Elgato Stream Deck is out the setup. I do really like the fact that this uses a detachable USB-C cable. And when it comes to cable managing this wire, dead easy as well. And because I have some excess cable, I'll just plug this into the USB hub there. Oh, that is very loud. And then I'll just hide away the excess cable inside of the J-channel. And we're ready to go. Ooh, so it does have dedicated buttons, just like the Stream Deck. Aha, uh -huh, so this is actually a lot more similar to the Stream Deck than I thought. I thought all of this was just one big screen, but there's actually like separation between all the buttons. That's good. So the Razer Stream Controller is all set up. This dial right here, of course, controls my main system volume, and it even has a value there for the system volume. Say for example, I have Spotify opened up, I can press on profile three, then I have my multimedia stuff here, I can press play, and it eventually begins playing. Very nice, I can pause it, of course. And you can also do the same thing through the keyboard. Pretty cool, right? We can also skip songs through the keyboard as well by double-clicking, I think. There you go, we just skip the song, and we can pause it again. And we can also skip a song, of course, through this device. Very nice, pause it, cool. We also have volume control over Spotify directly, not over system volume. So the volume, if I twist this dial backwards, you'll see the volume dropping within Spotify. And if I twist it the other way, the volume will go back up. It is sort of laggy. I'm not sure if that's the fault of this device or Spotify being weird, but it does work very well. You also get a soundboard. So if I twist this dial right here for scale, you'll see me actually adjusting the scale of this video. I can also adjust the rotation by using another dial. I can position it up or down to the side. Really awesome feature, incredible integration with Adobe Premiere and creative applications. And of course, you can also set up your own custom profiles within this. It has come with tons of these profiles already set up and I'm sure you can probably download and find even more. It automatically switches between my Adobe profile and let's say the default one, depending on what application is maximized. So there's me going back onto Adobe. And if I press the Windows key, it of course goes back to a normal profile that isn't for Adobe. But now that we've gotten some of the setup upgraded with the new stream controller and the new keyboard, I think it's time to unbox the Razer Mouse Dock Pro as well. Now, I do think that this Razer Mouse Dock Pro isn't gonna work with any of the mice I have. I am sort of hoping that it will work, not as a charging dock, but at least as something any of my mice can pair to. But what is cool about this mouse dock, and you could say the Razer Viper V2 Pro that I have here, is the fact that this mouse dock comes with an integrated 4000 Hz wireless polling rate transceiver. So this mouse also supports 4000 Hz polling rate wirelessly. I think Razer is still perhaps the only company in the industry with this feature. But regardless, if I can somehow get this to work with my mouse, I'd be pretty happy. Okay, I've plugged the device in. It's sitting right here where my phone charger was sitting. The Mouse Dock Pro also comes with the actual wireless charging puck right here, which I'm guessing attaches onto the bottom of your mouse. Unfortunately, this mouse doesn't support it. This doesn't support the wireless charging puck either. Only these two mice here actually support the new charging puck, which is the Basilisk V3 Pro, the mouse I actually want to be using. And then there's the brand new Naga V2 Pro as well. It just got released. But um, yeah, this for now 
I have, I have no use for this. In the meantime, my system is once again telling me to restart after installing the update for that guy. Now, while the PC is restarting, I think we should get the Razer Death Adder V2 Pro unboxed as well. Here it is. Very nice. Then inside of here, we have this compartment, which I'm guessing has the cable and documentation. Then we have the actual USB dongle that is labeled as well. So you can plug in the USB-C cable into the mouse and actually use it as a wired mouse if you don't want to use the wireless feature. Or you can, of course, take the USB dongle and plug it directly into your PC. Or the third option is if you really want, I guess, the best signal quality between the dongle and the actual mouse itself, you could plug the cable, the USB-C end, into you could call it like a dongle dock right here and sort of use this as like an extension cable. So then this would plug into your PC, the actual USB-A end, and then you would have that device sitting rather close to your actual mouse. So this isn't actually plugged in yet. Instead of doing that, I am simply just gonna plug it into my PC right there, because that is a little bit easier in my opinion. And also I will have to press and hold the power button on here to turn it on. I think you only have to hold it for a couple seconds. There you go. And we are on, we are online. While I was editing the first half of today's video, I did try the pomegranate watermelon flavored gum. I'm now gonna try the Respawn Cool Mint flavored gum. Now it does have vitamins in here, uh, B5, B6, and B12. The actual packaging and everything is really impressive and the whole marketing of the gum, I am a big fan of. It just looks very premium. I have two pieces of the gum right here. This is the mint flavor. Mmm, that's good. For gum, that's genuinely good. I like the cool mint flavor a lot more than I do like the pomegranate watermelon flavor. It wasn't bad, but the cool mint, they've really done good there. That's good. You can't really go wrong. I did just do another taste test of the third flavor, the tropical punch. And uh, I gotta say, this is my second favorite. The Cool Mint is by far the best. And the Pomegranate Watermelon, that's probably third. But this one's pretty good as well. It's quite sweet. I'm a fan. But now that we've tasted all of the gum, we've set up the new keyboard, the new mouse, the stream controller. We also have the wireless charging dock that I did try and pair my Viper V2 Pro. I don't care about the wireless charging as long as I could pair to it and get, you know, 4,000 hertz polling rate. That would be good, but you can't. At least I tried with this mouse, wouldn't let me. So then I tried with the new mouse, the Death Adder V3 Pro, and it didn't let me either. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wait until either I get the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro or the Razer Naga V2 Pro, which fingers crossed, Razer will send me. I think there is one thing left to do to add to the setup, and that is the soundbar. Ah, so here it is, the Leviathan V2 from Razer. I've never tried the original Leviathan and I've also never tried, I think, any speakers from Razer in the past. I did want the Razer Nomo Chroma speakers for the longest time, but I never could get hold of one from Razer, unfortunately. So this will be my first impression of a Razer speaker system or in this case, a Razer soundbar that I'm certain this comes with a subwoofer, it does. It does come with a subwoofer. Now this thing of course does have RGB, full Razer Chroma compatibility, so it will of course probably come with some Razer stickers somewhere. There's a European power adapter as well as the UK version. It does come with a power brick as well. This is on top of the box right here. And of course, up here, the actual soundbar itself, that's all wrapped up. We have, quite the subwoofer. We have some actual buttons here as well, power on, plus minus, there's a Bluetooth mode. The soundbar, I will probably just place right here because I don't know where else to really put it. And it does actually look quite good when it's sitting there. But I'm gonna take advantage of the feet that actually come with this thing to elevate the soundbar a little bit off of my monitor stand. There we go, that's much better. This Leviathan V2, I'm gonna be comparing against what I would argue is the perfect competing product, which is from Creative, and that is their Sound Blaster Katana version two. I have the actual original version one 
behind my monitor, which I've been using as my speakers for the setup for the last while, but recently Creative actually sent me their version 2 Katana system, which I'm going to be putting directly up against this, because they both have subwoofers, they both have RGB lighting, they're both soundbars of a very similar size. As for the pricing of both of the products and of course everything else that we've unboxed here today, everything will be linked in the description down below. So if you're interested in checking the price for the stream controller, the keyboard, the mouse, the mouse dock, or the new soundbar, or the competitive soundbar from Creative, everything is linked down below for you. With all the new gear that Razer has sent, this is how the setup is now looking like. We have the Stream Controller from Razer, the Deathstalker V2 Pro, the Death Adder V3 Pro, the Mouse Dock Pro, and the Leviathan V2, all set up with the subwoofer. One thing I ended up doing with this Death Adder V3 Pro mouse and the new keyboard Razer have sent is instead of using two dongles that I have here, this is for the actual Death Adder V3 Pro, but you'll see that even though this mouse isn't actually plugged in via the dongle it came with, it's still working. How have I done this? Well, Razer actually have a hyperspeed multi-device pairing utility that can be accessed by pressing the open pairing utility button and then you can use one dongle, for example the dongle that came with the keyboard that I have plugged into the PC right here. You can use that single dongle to pair both the keyboard and another device which in this case is a mouse. Nowadays wireless peripherals like headsets, keyboards, mice and whatever else are becoming more and more popular and the moment you have multiple of these wireless devices each with their own USB dongle for wireless connectivity you'll quickly end up with a lot of them and no USB ports left on your actual PC so the hyperspeed multi-device pairing utility is very helpful with cutting down the amount of dongles that you need to use. When it comes to the Razer Stream Controller there's some things that they've done really well and other things that I'm not too big of a fan of. I could easily make a 10 minute video ranting about about what I like and don't like about this product and how it compares to my Elgato Stream Deck which I just upgraded from. But to give you a quick summary of my thoughts on the device so far, here's what I like and don't like about it. The dials and physical buttons feel great and premium. The whole device in general just feels really well built and high quality. However, this is a Razer product and it doesn't really work with Razer Synapse whatsoever. Instead, when you press on the Razer Stream Controller on Razer Synapse, it redirects you to a different bit of software to actually configure the device, which is a bit of a letdown. I really was hoping Razer had their own software integrated into Razer Synapse to allow you to customize everything about it. After all, they have macros. Surely this wouldn't have been that difficult to implement, but no, you have to use the Loop Deck software to configure this device, which would be fine if the software was better. Coming from an Elgato Stream Deck and the Stream Deck software, which is, in my opinion, very user-friendly, super easy to use, even for someone who's just bought the product. The Loop Deck software, on the other hand, is similar, but in my opinion, way less user-friendly and way more confusing. But I'm sure given enough time, I will get used to using the Loop Deck software and it won't be too big of a deal, apart from the fact that, once again, it doesn't even work through Razer Synapse. But besides that, the main thing that I think is really the main letdown of this product, at least in my opinion, is the haptic motor that is in this thing. Elgato's approach to their Stream Deck, in my opinion, is better. It's different, but it's better. This, instead of using actual buttons that you can bottom out and press, this uses touchscreen buttons and the haptic motor to sort of simulate you pressing something, which I'm gonna play you some sound clips of. So I would highly recommend you turn the waveform vibration to short, which is just barely acceptable, I'd say. Especially if you're wearing headphones, I'm sure it wouldn't really bother you too much, but if you're not wearing headphones, it just doesn't sound good. It's not like super bad, but it just doesn't match the rest of the product. The whole device in general, the buttons, the dials, the whole device in general feels so premium and looks absolutely spot on. It looks the part, but the haptic motor in this thing leaves a lot to be desired and I just so much prefer having physical buttons I can press. The Razer Stream Controller has sort of taken the approach of like a modern day car, where instead of having physical buttons for the multimedia controls, they've instead chosen to use haptic touch buttons, which 
don't deliver as good of a user experience. Anyway though, thank you so much for watching as always. Today's video is already getting very long, so I'm gonna end it here. But thank you to Razor for sending all of the bits over. I really appreciate it. The setup has definitely gotten a bit more of a fresh look now.